Welcome to the West Point Plaza, and his little brother, the Muldra Plaza. This place is touted as one of, if not the hardest map mod, and honestly, I underestimated it. It took me 10 hours to figure out a strategy to survive the first week. We start naked and afraid. I've pretty much got the opening down to a T. Grab the chairs for later, drop them off somewhere strategic, try the windows of the isolated rooms on the roof, pray that they don't smash and shred your feet. Don't stand all oh, the glass. And hope that one of the zombies have a pair of shoes you can steal. With a pair of shoes, we're free to start. Window and fence strats are our best friend here. It's only gonna get worse. Annoyingly, both doors are locked, and we don't have anything to remove the broken glass. Lucky for us, all these metal gates and fences drop metal pipes and bars when broken, so that's going to be our main weapon for like the first 1000 kills or so. I'm going to refer to bars and pipes as just bars from now on to keep it simple. We get 3 bars from this one gate and put one in each hand, ready to quickly swap when they break. Inside the first room, 3 more bars. Since the last mall series, I've perfected the fast swing glitch, so you're going to see a lot of fast paced fighting. Inside the next room, two bars, some cigarettes, a jacket, nails, duct tape, and a plank. That's it for isolated rooms. We won't get any more loot for a while yet. We also found a key, but it's pretty hit or miss as to whether or not it works. And that's basically our time up. The hordes are here. We drop our extra weapons, and very nearly end the run right then and there. For the last few hours, I've been kiting zombies to fall down this hole, but I wanted to try plan B. On the other side of the mall is a rooftop gym area. There's only one way up. So I'm going to try and clear it by force. Oh shit, fever, 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 fever. Go away, go away, go away. Fuck me, that's, that's rough. I'd really hoped I could clear this side, but no. 400 kills and corpse sickness later, I was still running from zombies. And then my last weapon broke. <sighs> this brings us back to plan A. Lowering the zombies down this exposed glass roof area to drop them into the food hall. This took a long time and there were a lot of zombies, but I really have to skip over it for the sake of the video. I must emphasize that I've been doing this for hours. On the bright side, I was gaining a level in sneaking and light footed every couple of minutes due to the sheer amount of zombies below me. As the sun rose on the second day, we were still luring zombies over, with no end in sight. I was getting tired. Not so much of an issue now, if I'm careful and manage my stamina, but as I got more and more exhausted, I'd no longer be able to recover my breath. I needed a place to sleep, but with every direction swarming with zombies, I had no choice but to push on. Every time it seemed to be thinning out, hundreds would emerge out of nowhere. Eventually, I was completely exhausted. I snuck away to try and sleep. Oh, come on. I had to move the chair to a safer location, but it was no use. I woke up almost immediately. Why did I wake up? It just wasn't safe. I moved the chair again into the furthest reaches I could. Still, no good. I simply couldn't sleep. The sun was setting. I couldn't survive like this. At the very least, I'd recovered my stamina, but being sleep deprived, it would soon run out. I had to make a play, use the energy I had to find somewhere safe. But we had another problem. I was starving. After losing health to the fever, there was no telling if I'd survive a night of starvation or how weak I'd be in the morning. In the 40 hours of desperate fighting, I'd used up all the energy my body had. So as my stamina waned, I ran back to the rooftop gym and prayed there was something inside. Coffee! What a godsend! And a pineapple, but that's it. It's enough to keep us from starving at least. A quick dash out through the swarming zombies, and I snuck back to the chair. Still not safe. 
I killed the nearby zombies as quiet as I could. Not an easy task when every fibre of your being has been firing on all cylinders for almost 48 hours. More would always hear me. But, by some sheer luck, after the last zombie, no more came. Oh my god. We're alive. My god, we're alive. We woke up on the brink of dying from starvation. I ate the pineapple. I could hear swarms of the undead outside. But, we were alive. I dispatched the closest zombies, but more had wandered up through the night. I was desperate to clear them out. I really wanted to get started looting them all and finally being able to kill all these zombies but they seemed to be endless. I was able to kill good chunks of them when I had the chance, but this was no life to live. I was barely surviving. It took a lot of mental willpower just to keep going. After so many hours of what seemed like no progress, I didn't even know what day it was. Three, four, five? The movements were automatic. Run to the doors, yell, run around, then run back to the window. Run to the doors, yell, run back to the window. Run, yell, run. Run. Yell. Run. The only thing that seemed to change was my sneak skill. A helicopter lured some off the edge, which was helpful. And the gym side was clear enough to get water from. Though every time I went there, zombies would soon follow. For a moment, it even looked like I'd cleared it. But they soon reminded me of a reality. <gasps> what the f- I tried to fight it. All night, and all day, I killed zombies with my metal pipes. Almost 600 zombies killed with them. Surely, I was making it then. Soon, it'd be over. Soon. Five shotgun. On the 500th kill. Again, oh my god. Having spent so long on the gym side, the other side was relatively quiet. I was able to sneak down to a restaurant and nab some booze before they caught up to me. I couldn't kill a single zombie down here. The noise would attract hundreds and trap me. But I returned to some bad news. Wait, are we? The water's gone out. The water's fucking gone out. Are you kidding me? The booze helped me stave off starvation, but it also made me tired, so we were sleeping more. I have no idea how long I'd survived up here. I was able to get into one of the rooms on the roof that linked to the loading bay. They had some industrial loot, which was great as we were down to our last pipes. I tried crafting some weapons, but they weren't very good. And before long, the hordes were back. And we nearly died to a glitch. No, 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 this is not fair. Are we okay? That's not fair at all. You see the animation get stuck? I don't know what's causing that glitch. Before we continue, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, War Thunder. As you know, I do like War Thunder. Maybe it's the selection of 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships from 10 major nations, even if I only play the British. Or maybe it's the immersive combat of War Thunder, with its incredibly detailed damage models, realistic graphics, and thousand mile stare inducing sound effects. Or maybe because it's free? on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC? And it's cross-platform? You know what I didn't realize until reading the ad notes for Wart Hunter? I never experienced lag, not even on my crusty old PC. The X-Ray view is perfectly designed to infuriate you every time you miss, only to flood your brain with dopamine when you hit that juicy ammo wreck. X-Ray of what, you say? I'm glad you asked! War Thunder doesn't just use hitboxes. Each vehicle has been expertly crafted to have realistic compartments and damage models. No other game lets you know that so why not join a community of over 70 million players in epic PvP battles? Join now using my link, whether you're a new player or a returning player that hasn't played for six months, on any platform to get... Snails? Oh right, because it's the company logo. Free festive snail logos you can slap all over your vehicle, as well as multiple premium vehicles, an exclusive Eagle of Valor decorator, 100,000 silver lions, and seven days of premium account time. All right, enough of this. It's time we start killing these bastards.
killed a thousand of them, almost exclusively with bloody metal pipes. My shortland was almost level 6, and my sneaking was level 5. But still, it didn't feel like we'd made any progress. I tried using radios to passively lure them, but they don't get power up here. There was a very real possibility that they were wandering outside and finding their way back up through the stairwell. Fuck it. We're going downstairs. I need food. Where we got the booze earlier has a kitchen. I needed some high calorie food as my weight was getting dangerously low. We'd need a lot of calories to stop our weight loss, and even more to gain it back. The fridges were all still running, but I wanted to use all the fresh food first, especially the stuff that's dangerous raw. I stuck everything in the oven and kept looting, but despite my efforts to be as quiet as possible, a single zombie wandered up. I don't know if I can kill you quietly. And like a hydra, one turned into two. Two into four. It's only gonna get worse. It's only gonna get worse. And I was pushed out the kitchen. Four turned into twelve. I tried to salvage the food. <sighs> For fuck's sake. But it was too dangerous. Besides, it had burned already. I retreated to the roof. Ah, oh, shit! The oven was still on. How could I have been so negligent? I've seen this before. The whole mall was about to burn down. I had to corral the zombies before they spread this like crazy. But it, it's already too late. There's no way. There's no way. It's gonna burn the whole place down. I headed to the highest point for safety and to think. There was nothing I could do. The fire would spread unchecked, and with every zombie in the building attracted to its noise. Noise. I had an idea. I jumped down, put the radio in the stairwell, and turned it up to full blast. Hopefully, any zombies lit on fire would be attracted to the radio and burn out in the stairwell instead of spreading. I headed down, trying to collect as many burning zombies as possible to stop the spread. Putting fires out where I could. But the fucking water was off. There just wasn't enough. I moved the radio to a better location, but it, it was all futile. Too hot, too many zombies. I couldn't do this. I retreated upstairs to the charred roof where I had to watch my step and secured a small room by the stairs and drank myself to sleep. It was raining. It was quiet. Real quiet. Eerie, almost. Not a single zombie in sight. You can see the paths that the fire took. There was no telling what the interior looked like. I peered into what looks to be the loading bay. A couple of zombies. We can handle them, provided the hordes don't pour out the woodwork when we start making noise. Which of course, they do. But at this point, we're a formidable force. We've killed this many 50-fold already. The real exciting stuff is what's in these boxes. For countless days and nights, we've fought tooth and nail with scraps. Down here would be tools, materials, everything we needed to level up. Out of everything we found, it was outshined by a welding mask, meaning we could start metalworking, and a trolley. We're going to be doing so much looting, crafting, and building, this makes it so much less painful. We load up the trolley with as much loot as we can, and take it upstairs. We also found a watch, which tells us we're on day 10, and that the fire killed 654 zombies. We're at 1174 kills. We don't really have a home base, and nowhere is really safe, so we'll make do with this utility room. We make a new door, barricade the window, and organize. Yeah, this'll work. Somehow, and I really have no idea how, we lost our belt, so I need to make a new one. For that, we need tailoring one, so we'll have to train up a little. Despite us having cleared the loading bay, it doesn't take long for it to start swarming with zombies once more. Jesus Christ, man. I mean, I can do it. It's not the end of the world. But if I could get a fence here or something, it'd make my life so much easier. It's late, so we prepare for tomorrow. Short Blunt is nearly level six, holy shit. And sleep on the idea. I suppose I should tell you a little about our character, Klost Phoebe. He's a carpenter for the Short Blunt XP bonus and carpentry level three. Carpentry is super important, you'll see why later, but you need level 1 for floors and level 2 for fences. As for traits, we took all the free ones, thin skinned, slow healer, conspicuous, prone to illness, weak stomach and short sighted. If you want a full explanation of the traits, I'll do a proper deep dive soon. Underweight is almost free, we'll have plenty of food. Eventually. I don't usually take smoker, but I needed the points. 
For the positive traits, cat's eyes, dexterous, wakeful, fast learner, organized, athletic, and strong were musts for this challenge. Everything else is for XP boosts. And I took Fast Reader. Slow Reader is three points because you can just, you know, fast forward the game, but I've read all the books a million times. I just, I can't be asked anymore. I heard some zombies. I, okay, today, I want to put some fences there so that I can fight the zombies effectively. So we need wood. We disassemble what little furniture there is up here. Just enough to block the doorway. Can I do this quickly and quietly enough? Oh, no, <laughs> there they are. I think I can do it in time. It's not ideal, since there's three spots for them to jump over, but they all tend to go for the hole in the wall, so it's good enough. After killing 50 or so, I rip up the clothes, train to level 1 tailoring, and make a belt. In the late hours of the day, we're able to explore a little around the loading bay, including a doctor's office, partially burned, with a couple of medical supplies. Not a lot, but better than nothing. When it's dark, it's really hard to see in these burned areas. It's going to be a nightmare when the power goes off. There's not much else we can do this late, so we sleep. Today, we're going to go down with the trolley. We clear out the loading bay of zombies again. It's always worth moving the boxes at the front to get to the ones at the back. We hoover up the new loot and take it home. When we finished, it was late, but we weren't quite tired yet. I was eager to start making more progress in the mall, and there's a tool store right by the loading bay, so it seems like the perfect place to start. An hour or so later, and we're able to hoover up some more loot. We're running out of space for materials in our little room, so I store most of the raw stuff outside. On the morning of the 13th day, a military helicopter flies over, dropping leaflets. This warns us that, after a siren sounds, the military will open fire on anyone in the streets. This includes me. Oh shit, look at this. Oh no! Oh my god! I didn't even see this! I felt like it had been a while since I've been on a killing spree, so it's back to the gym side to get bloody. Fever! Shit. Oh no! They're gonna destroy my barricades again. Oh shit. Oh, that was rough. That was really rough. Oh, by the way, some loser called Hazard's been making fun of me for not having 100k subs. Hey Rick, I just realised you don't have one of them. Get fucked, kid. You guys are really doing me dirty here. Subscribe, or I'll do another raid ad. We're now on day 15. In that montage, we nearly hit 2,000 kills. I'll unpack a little of it. The crux of our killing power lies in these fences. When a zombie lunges over it, it's almost a guaranteed one-hit kill. By pressing two of them, the lunging zombies can't hit you. So we create this kind of kill box. If too many zombies try to crawl over at once though, the fence breaks. There were a few hairy moments, but the double fence system means that we have a lot of room for error. We broke that super quick! One thing that I learned was that the high temperature from the corpse sickness was causing us to attack slower, so I needed to address my dress. Take a look at the new drip. Look at those matching shoes, hat and gloves. It's a shame we can't wash. No water. It's not rained in weeks. 
We'll need rain collectors soon. It was almost completely clear. Uh, I don't know why I keep thinking about French people. Huh? I ran around making noise and only a few zombies would come, so I felt ready to explore. However, I was about to be reminded of my place. Oh, this is above the cinema, I think. That'd be really awesome if I could knock out one of these walls. Ooh. <gasps> Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Why were there so many of them? I mean, I, I could probably fight these guys. Ah, oh, but I can't, I can't run. This is such a stupid idea. I'm gonna pull them back. I don't know if my exit's secure. I could take them by backing up. In the moment, it didn't feel like this was something I couldn't deal with. Just the garland, garland, garland me home. But when I look behind me, more were coming from the other side. Uh oh. Alarms went off in my head. I need to get out of here. This is, uh, this is bad. I was about to get trapped. I rushed over to secure my exit. Please don't tell me I've just fucked it. How many were waiting for me outside? I was only in here a few minutes. Okay, looks good, but I'm not taking any chances. God, I can't risk it. Shit, 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 shit. Don't panic. Just deal with them. I've really, I've really put myself in a bad position. Oh, this is really bad. This is really bad. Okay, don't waste any time. Just go for it. Out the way. I'm not risking it. Okay, yeah. <gasps> oh, oh, what the fuck? Oh my god, get in the safety box. I'm tired. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Run, 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 run. They're gonna break that super quick. Fucking hell. Alright, very rarely does my heart start beating in this game. I can't I can't fight this. With the with the foot, it's gonna get me killed. I have to bail. Oh fuck. After regaining my composure, I tried again to resecure the roof and failed. Oh, how did you get that? <laughs> I don't want to die today. I don't want to die. Uh, at least we hit 2,000 kills. I need water. With no rain collector and, well, no rain, water was a small issue. We'd have to venture further and further into the mall to find taps and cisterns with a little water left in them. We needed one more level in carpentry to make a rain collector. Naturally, I got distracted and started killing zombies, but clearing out the tool store allowed me to get level 4 carpentry to make rain collectors. There we go. That's all I needed. We just needed four garbage bags. While we were there, we also saw some propane grills and generators, which we'll need later. The world was bathed in sunset red when we returned home. While it didn't feel like we'd accomplished much, there was so much potential on the horizon. But right now, we needed food. We were on the precipice of malnourishment. 65 weight would make us significantly weaker. We can't let that happen. When we woke up on the 16th, the power was out. Pretty coincidental, the day we were going to go down for food. Hopefully, none of it spoiled. So, with our foot healed, we grabbed the trolley. It's not going to be easy. I don't know the layout of the mall. I've never been here before, and I didn't look at any of the maps on the mod page. Don't get overwhelmed. Here we go. Oh, it's all wrong. Shove everything into the trolley. Oh, my 
don't fucking... I don't know why I couldn't go through that way, but whatever. It wasn't the greatest haul, but at least we had some solid food, and enough of it to gain weight. The most efficient way to gain weight in Zomboid is to bulk up on calories, then do something that doesn't burn them, like reading, for a few days. If I were to go out and kill another 500 zombies, I'd burn all the calories and continue losing weight. So we grab Metalworking 1, grab a chair, have a change of clothes, before sitting down to read. The next day, we finish the book and grind up to level 2. Okay, look at all those pipes. All those Axe vs Crowbar idiots on Reddit don't know what they're missing. I know I just talked about conserving calories, but I just can't sit still for long. Now that the power's off, and we're metalworking, I want the propane tanks from the grills downstairs, and the generator, though I don't know how to use it. We head down, clear out the zombies that tried to follow us yesterday, and make our way to the grills. Stick to this side. I take extra care to kill zombies out of earshot of the hole so we can loot in relative safety. We remove the tanks. Holy shit. Level 7 sharp blunt. Load them onto the trolley. Grab a barbecue. And make a clean getaway. Let's get out of here. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it. In the morning we nip down to grab the Jenny. I didn't really expect to get a generator, they don't spawn in malls and shops, so they've been placed by the map maker. But how do we get petrol? There's no petrol stations, and no cars to siphon, but what we can do is learn to create our own biofuel. I have no idea how to do this, so we'll have to learn. All I know is that I need to grow corn, which requires dirt, so it looks like we'll be making a rooftop farm. But we don't have the magazine yet anyway, so this is for a later date. I make a quick run through the restaurant and the doctor's office to grab some rubbish bags to make our first rain collector. It's very burnt down here, real hard to navigate. There we go. All we need now is rain. With short blunt 7 and strength 10, we're bordering on overpowered oh now. My. Oh! How to use generators! So we really do just need petrol now. Well, why not make a start on that then? The only thing in the mall that I've really seen is a little gardening store on the outside. If we make an escape road down, we can grab dirt through the windows to start farming. It's somewhere on the east side. Probably where that jump scare door is. <gasps> Holy shit! Fuck. Welcome back to the West Point Plaza. Last time, we glossed over 500 kills like it's nothing, because, well, I can't just do montages for the whole video. Oh, we finally made it here. We're already at 3,500 kills, which is 1,000 more than we got in 100 days of Louisville rooftops, and we're only on day 20. The way into the mall is now relatively open, so we pushed through the cinemas on the east side of the mall and found the stairwell down. This wasn't really ideal. I was hoping for a roof to let us rope down to the gardening store. Really, I should have kept pursuing this, but after fighting for so long and coming across even more zombies, I just couldn't be bothered. At least we found a gas mask. Corpse sickness would be a problem no longer. We make another expedition downstairs. We wind up in the upstairs of the supermarket we went into last time, and end up getting into a bit of a spicy spot, with zombies coming front and behind. Nothing we can't handle. But when we try and go to the supermarket floor, we get forced out by the emerging hordes.
After recouping upstairs, it's time to really have a go at the mall. The plan is to head downstairs and scout out as much of the mall as possible. At this point, I was worrying that there weren't enough zombies, that I'd practically conquered the mall. Boy was I wrong. The middle of the mall was dead quiet. Meta events like helicopters and distant gunshots tend to lure the zombies to the edges of the mall, where they get stuck on the walls. So the idea that the mall was empty was being reinforced. It wasn't until we started encroaching on the south end of the mall that things took a turn for the worse. Kiting zombies is nothing new to me, but I don't know this mall. I don't know my escape route, and only a minor lapse in concentration could end it all. <gasps> Shit! A library! This is probably the biggest enabler for our progression. We can't loot it now. We'll have to bring the trolley down and clear a path. And a hunting store! Again, we'll have to clear a path to the base, wherever it is. And as it turns out, the back room connects right to the end of the loading bay. It was so close this whole time. Well, that was a very enlightening day for us. We've got a lot of work to do. I'm not wasting any time. I want those books. With the library safe enough to loot, I go around taking every edition of every book, every magazine. It was a nightmare. I must have left with around a hundred pieces of literature. We don't get home until 2am. With a wealth of knowledge to wade through, we spend the 23rd and 24th days reading until we pass out. We filled up on calories to gain weight as we do. By the 25th, we've read most of our books. But we're still missing a few. A quick run downstairs fixes that. We also grab a sleeping bag from the hunting store. It's not much better than our beach chair, but at least it's made for sleeping. More reading on the 26th, and on the morning of the 27th, we've read every skill book. Except biochemistry. I have every single book, except for the first biochemistry. There were like 10 copies of every single skill book, but not a single beginner biochemistry. We grind up electrical and metalworking. spend the 28th amidst a raging storm reading the next books. Our sabbatical ends on the 29th, during the tail end of the storm. Our weight is up to 73, only two away from healthy. Our crafting skill potential is through the roof, and our weapon skills aren't looking too bad either. We try out some new clothing, settling for a blue fit. We head back to the hunting store. I wanted a shotgun, as it's the most effective way to learn aiming, but we got real unlucky with the loot. I pondered our options for a long time, and decided on trying a rifle. <laughs> that scope is ludicrous. Probably not the best idea to learn to shoot with a 223. Oh boy. Yep, yeah, just using this. Uh, it's only a 223, so it wouldn't be mega loud, right? Or is 223. This will not come back to bite us, surely. <laughs> Oh, damn it, I didn't bring any fucking bullets with me. We end up getting swarmed, and I retreat. Yep. Okay. That's not that many. But I'm just not really equipped to fight right now. Spent the rest of the day practicing loading and unloading the gun. 
We didn't have much choice for guns. Two Springfields, two other rifles, a revolver, and 15 fucking M9s. Naturally, we take an M9. Probably a bit more of a beginner-friendly weapon. We take it to the cinema, to finally clear it for good. The trick is to count your shots. Load your mag between kills. And reload to a full mag whenever you get a spare second. Last night, we'd found a set of clothing labelled as badass, <laughs> so obviously we had to try it out. Nerd, I prefer the term intellectual badass. As great as it was, I decided to build an outfit around the pants. I don't have great fashion sense in real life, but damn if I don't make my characters look good. Last night, we hit 4,000 kills, and we also gathered a load of leather. But the most important resource is the thread, so we combine it all... Um. Oops. Are oh, you kidding? <sighs> Luckily, I can rip up our mountain of ripped sheets for more thread. We grind tailoring up to level 4 and read the next book, giving us a boost for tailoring 5 and 6. I tried to make a to-do list on the map, and I'm not very good at planning or staying on task, so a lot of this gets put on the back burner. But it's still early days, we have plenty of time to start focusing up. Later on, we head down and grab a sink. We build a rain collector on the roof, let me up, and plumb the sink into the table below. There we go, we now have a sink. In Zomboid, this setup filters the water. So, once it rains, this will be a source of clean drinking water. I also take my first tentative steps into biochemistry. It seems we don't have the right recipe books yet. But we're able to make a start by making a distiller for later. Oh! <laughs> that- Wow, that's jank. This thing looks so crusty. Early in the morning of the 33rd day, we finally start working on our long-term goals. We head over to the gym side, disassemble furniture for wood, oh nice, and climb up onto the roof. Careful, that, that's it, that's it, that's it. Wait, I'm pretty sure this is the stairwell right here that we were fighting in. So we've lured all the zombies up, all we need to do is go across. Ah, it's so confusing. One, two, three, four. Getting the wood up here was a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, no, okay. We shouldn't need too many, to be honest. I think that'll be enough. We build a platform to drop down from. Here we go. That leads us... Oh, I was almost right. This roof is sketchy as fuck. I hate it. We can walk on this. Oh! Okay, don't walk on this stuff. I make it as safe as possible and prepare myself to drop. Your gun is loaded. I'm gonna put you in both hands. Have a quick smoke. It might not work. Fuck. Oh! I don't know. Oh shit, no! Fuck you, man. Oh, you're fucking kidding me. We're gonna have to go up the stairwell. I don't even know if it's possible. And can you please hit them? Oh my god, this angle. This fucking spear sucks ass. Coffee seeds? Broccoli would be good. Carrot, more coffee, more coffee. Corn, 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 corn. Wheat could be good. Potatoes are good too. 
We empty out some gravel bags and fill them up with dirt through the windows. Let's go. It was lucky that we cleared out this particular area with the M9. Otherwise, it'd be swarming with zombies. It was an uneventful retreat, thankfully. We dump out the dirt on the rooftop above our base and head back for more. Chance I am cursed. There we go. Alright. With the farm complete, this is all the dirt that the challenge allows for. It soaked up all of our water. It's been a real dry season. Hopefully, the crops survive on the little water rations we gave them. At the top, we're growing coffee and lemongrass. Then we have a row of corn, wheat, and potatoes. The bookcases we grabbed were to try and plug this hole in the wall. But we can't, because there's a light switch and an outdoor light blocking each side. Not really ideal, but... Whatever. Instead, we spend the morning tidying up. We also start seeing zombies making their way back up here. I think it's zombies from the woods making their way over. I spend the night reading and pass out on the roof. Oh, passed out. Finally, we wake up to rain. This means we can use our sink for clean water, and of course, our crops are water. Clean water. Look at that. Because we passed out last night, we need to sleep properly. We wake up in the evening and head downstairs for more building materials. Oh boy, okay. Call it wishful thinking, but I grabbed some floodlights for when we get the generator up and running. Let's see if we can't explore the mall some more. We head down, through the loading bay, through the burnt doctor's office, into a restaurant overlooking the food court. Switch to the pickaxe. Oh. See, I, just, I can't see anything. <laughs> the glasses sticking through it. That's a better fit. We make our way east, under the gym side. After the 4,000 zombies we killed up there, it's pretty clear. Same story for the cinema lobby. All these chairs are indestructible, by the way. So you can pick up these chairs. Don't think there's anything worthwhile here. An adjacent bar is also empty, so we grab a little food. We're already getting overloaded, and with it being so quiet, I think it's safe to bring the trolley down. I was getting worried that the entire mall was restaurants, cafes, and clothes shops. We also found a hairdresser and decided to dye our hair. We run into a tattoo parlor and a gym, where we steal a water barrel from the sauna. Hold up. It's 7.5, that's not bad. But we reach the east end of the mall. Here, things take a turn for the worse. So see. Oh yeah, baby. Ooh, hello. Okay, I think I found where the zombies have been hanging out. They're almost certainly trying to get to me now. This pickaxe is fucking incredible. It uses a lot of stamina though. I've got to keep an eye on that. Might be better to just use the axe. Oh boy, okay, yep, switch the axe. It might be worth it for the one hit kills. Oh, guaranteed two hit kills. Yep, okay, they are coming for me. Energy is good. Got one behind. So you. Quick rest. Need all the energy we can get. It seemed to be going well, but their numbers kept growing, and my weapon condition kept worsening.
overconfident, thinking there weren't many zombies left in the mall. I start firing my gun. Fuck it. Fun. Fuck! Uh, can't just jam on me like that. Oh balls. Oh balls. Oh balls. No choice but to retreat. Put myself in a sticky situation here. Oh balls. <laughs> oh balls. I try and grab the trolley, but it's no use. Ah, oh, fuck me. My trolley. Oh balls. Oh balls. Oh, I thought I was being so clever. <sighs> don't stress, don't stress. Every time, this happens every time, I'm like, Oh look, there's no zombies in the mall. Oh, the challenge isn't hard enough, there's not enough zombies. And then, the, fucking this happens. What did I even come out for? I think I just wanted to have a look around. I need to make sure I really wrangle them in, but I'm, I'm gonna get myself killed. No, it's not worth it for the trolley, it's not worth it. I stop by the gun store on the way home. Frustrated by the poor range of weapons, I grab a Springfield, a revolver, and all the ammo. Ready for a shootout tomorrow. Armed with all the weapons we can muster, I head down. In order to improve the effectiveness of the Springfield, I grind our reloading skill. But this is slow, since we don't have enough ammo to fill all of our M9 magazines. So I devise a plan to grab the 15 M9s and unload more ammo from them. This doesn't go as planned. All the zombies we lured this way block us, and in my frustration, I use all the M9 in Springfield ammo, trying to clear them. Okay. That's it, we're out. Hordes still remain and I retreat with my tail between my legs. I clear the zombies that follow us using the fence, but even that doesn't go smoothly. Uh, I'm going to sleep. The next day, I'm pretty downbeat about the gun situation. I'd hoped we'd have a real arsenal, but what we ended up with was ammo for guns we don't have, and 15 fucking M9s, which we've already used all the ammo for. And now zombies are constantly encroaching on the base. It feels like we're losing control. The frustration was getting the better of me. You know what? I thought, fuck it. Fired my gun at the base. Let them come. I'll kill them all.
end of the day, we'd hit 5,000 kills. The library was resecured, but that's about it. It was a Pyrrhic victory. Welcome back to the West Point Plaza. We've killed 5,000 zombies, and based on my initial predictions, I'd still agree that we have about 5,000 left in the mall. However, due to some dubious settings I may have chosen, there's a real chance that things are about to get much worse. We've been pretty lucky for meta events. But these settings mean that the zombies respawn instantly in the woods, where they wait patiently until they hear a sound. Back with another mil Help! Help! <laughs> okay, I need to explain some technical stuff. Up until now, I've used a mod called Better FPS to, well, you know. But how it works is it makes the rendered area smaller, but I don't need this anymore. So we've reverted back to the original setting. The problem lies in how the game deals with unrendered or simulated zombies. Rendered zombies in the real world will be attracted to the noise you and the things in your rendered cell make, such as cars, fires, generators, etc. These simulated zombies, however, don't hear those noises. Instead, they hear the world stage. In other words, meta events. So, these zombies have laid dormant, but now that our rendered area has returned to normal, they hear me and the noises around me. So this time, I promise to set my goals straight and build an arsenal of salvaged weapons and guns, which will be a much needed defense against the changing threat. <laughs> the next few days were a mess of planning. I was trying to get my head around all the crafting recipes available to us and what we needed to achieve them. Sometimes we needed levels, sometimes we needed resources that we might never have. It's hard to show you how frustrating this was. Every time I thought I had what I needed, something was missing. For instance, I wanted to make a salvaged shotgun, okay? So I need gun parts. Gun parts require an armory table. The table needs wood. Uh, running out of storage space. We can't make metal crates because we used all the pipes as weapons. Okay, go downstairs and disassemble wood for crates and for the armory table. Now it's too dark to pick up the planks. Sleep. Need trolley to bring the wood up. It's full of weapons. No space to put them. Put the weapons on the floor. This certainly won't cause the game to crash in three hours time. Grab all the planks. Try and make the armory table. Need more screws. Grab the screws. Build the workbench. Gun parts require guns. Grab the 15 M9s. Can't use the fucking M9s. Zombies literally coming into the base now. Grab some guns to sacrifice. Try and make the salvage shotgun. We're missing something. Look through the recipe to see what we're missing. We're missing small metal sheets. We have none. Okay, we can make them with a metal cutter. Grab the metal cutter. It's the wrong kind of metal cutter. It literally says for cutting fucking metal. Try and disassemble for them. Realize you can't disassemble for small metal sheets. You can only loot them. Try to make the right kind of metal cutters. Completely out of the question. I give up on making the shotgun. I wonder how it'll go for everything else. So believe me when I tell you, I spent hours looking through the 2,552 recipes to find out what we can make and what we can eventually make and put them on the favorites tab. I come back a few days later and the game is real laggy. This happens when there's a lot of stuff on the ground. The game has to render all the models at once and if you click anything while it's loading, oh, sorry, unresponsive. So naturally, Time to clean up. Pipe sheets. Oh, I still can't make small sheets. Oh. Ah, oh, there we go. Miles better. Oh yeah, that's probably not helping, is it? Yeah, that's... Ah, uh, idiot. Oh shit, I'm getting sick from the bodies. Yep. Enough zombies have wandered over that I can't breathe the air anymore. How fun. I do make an effort to clear them, but it's only gonna get worse. At least we're a very healthy weight now. We spend the rest of day 41 disassembling. And in the morning, build a gate. No, 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 no! Making our little base much more secure. This was a long time coming. We spend the next day reading, interrupted by a helicopter crash. We try and spot it, but it's out of view. But look at those beautiful autumn colours though. And our lemongrass has grown. I was still lagging, so I kept tidying up. Turns out it's the blood decals. So if you're getting lag, try turning off blood. I still spend the rest of the day tidying up. And eventually, we sleep. sleep. A beard. Day 44 is a day spent entirely disassembling, and day 45 is more of the same. Level 10 carpentry. Let's go. I may have replaced a broken mod with the Horde Knight mod. I quickly shore up some defenses, but it's only 50 zombies. Pretty easy with a couple of fences. There, there's this little piece of information. I, I've known it for a long time, since I've tested every Horde mod in excruciating detail for other series. The Horde Knight spawns zombies. Sure, that's fine. But how do the zombies know where you are? All these mods make a noise over your head. It attracts the zombies. It attracts all the zombies. All the zombies. 
after I turned respawn to maximum, with maximum zombie fall and noise distance, and increased the render area for zombies to hear us, the realization hit me like a ton of bricks. It's not 50 zombies coming from me. There are potentially thousands of zombies now heading to my location. I ran and ate some coffee grounds. I wouldn't be sleeping tonight. Ah, it's basically empty. That's only gonna keep me awake for another hour or so. I was pretty certain that I just needed to survive until 1 a.m. when the mod stops making sound and that I'd be fine. I was so wrong. It was clear zombies were still coming for me, and the coffee had worn off. I ran down to the base and grabbed some more, but doing so brought zombies into the base. A shotgun! We've got four boxes of shells in the base, but- Ah, fuck! I just lured zombies down there! We have to take the risk! Shotgun shells, shotgun shells. Four. Let's do it. something. 45, 308. Take the 45. Do I have a 45 on me? You take 45. A few kills later, and it's over. Our hard night went from a predicted 50 to 500 in reality. This is gonna happen again. We need to rethink the defenses. I decide to knock down the fences in favor of windows. It's much more expensive, but they can't be destroyed. Next, we're gonna get some bookcases to block the holes in the wall. I don't know if this will work, but having zombies come through only where I want them to come through would be a huge advantage. I can attack the bookcases through the wall though, so we'll see if it works. On day 46, we finished most of the defences. I want to make stairs up to the farm, but I think we need a sledgehammer. I move a ladder over instead. It doesn't work. So I turn my attention back to progress. The south end of the mall's roof has been inaccessible due to the fire. I'm going to bridge over so I can use the access points up there. I also check on the crops and spot a few diseases. I had to check every single crop and remove any showing symptoms before it spreads. I spend all of day 47 disassembling. And on day 48, I use the wood to cross over to the south. Sadly, the way down is also burned. But continuing to the edge, I found another way down, in a much better location. But it's another goddamn corridor. I wonder what's going to end up happening here. While fighting, I get insanely unlucky. Or lucky, depending on how you look at it. What was that, three misses in a row? That was insanely lucky. I mean, it was insanely unlucky that I got stunlocked, but insanely lucky. Oh, again? I kill hundreds in the corridor, but I still have to retreat, despite our best efforts with the two metal pipes we found. Ah, oh, fuck no, I can't. I gotta go. 5,800 kills. <laughs> ah. I finish the day by grabbing some more of the disassembled wood I left downstairs. On day 49, some of the crops are ready, but we need to wait for them to be seed bearing, otherwise we'll run out of seeds. We're grabbing more wood from downstairs until late in the evening, when we get a nasty surprise. Uh, but, 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 but. I'm not taking any chances this time. I run straight up and add more layers to the defenses. No guns this time. It attracted way too many last hall night. Instead, I grab my trusty pipes. Are you kidding me through the fucking window? Rip them, rip them, rip them, rip them. Don't panic, don't panic.
The hard night was over, and the place was littered with bodies. It was a tiring affair. I needed to rest. Oh no. He's gone into a killing frenzy. The, the montage won't stop. He's edited the montage before the rest of the video. Always more. Always more. If you haven't seen already, I lost a lot of footage, and I mean a lot. You just saw up to day 51, but I recorded up to day 80. Then, in a terrible industrial accident where I pressed Ctrl Z while cut and pasting my PC exploded and we lost the files. I'm trying not to dwell on it, but we do have some meta knowledge now. Turns out there's small metal sheets downstairs, so our frustration with the crafting was for nothing. I'd scouted the entire mall. We've literally taken everything useful, apart from some incomplete solar array parts. There are no more recipe books, or biochemistry books, anything. I checked every single room, every single bookcase, nothing. We've essentially gotten everything useful from this mall. So, for the second time, time to waste a day of my life on a mega project. You may have noticed a stockpile of wood that's been growing. You must be thinking, what am I thinking? That's what I think you'd be thinking anyway. And you might be thinking that I'm thinking that's what you're thinking. And you might be thinking that I'm thinking that you're thinking about what I'm thinking, so surely I'd be thinking of ways to make you think that it was obvious that I'd be... Okay, look, I don't know how to reveal it. It's for a bridge. We're making a bridge to the other mall. It's a big, it's a big deal, okay? Please clap. In all seriousness, this bridge costs hundreds of planks. And getting those planks from the mall is no small feat. Even just hauling the planks to the roof is a days long task. It had originally taken me up to day 70 to get here, but I wanted to fast track over here, since I'd never been inside the South Mall, also known as the Muldra Plaza. There are some unique challenges with this mall. Going back to our zombie population settings, this southern mall has had time to reach its peak population. So although it's smaller, it potentially has more zombies than we experienced in the North Mall. But this time, we're prepared. I spent the days between collecting wood and building the bridge, making salvaged shotguns, gathering scrap metal for shells, and consolidating all of our unused ammo into gunpowder to make into bullets and shells for all the other guns that we have. It's not enough to roll over them all, but it's enough to have our biggest firefight yet. My main concern is that our guns will break before we run out of bullets, especially the salvaged shotgun. The ammo for this thing is dirt cheap, but the guns break pretty quick. We can repair them, but it'll get exponentially more expensive. Another concern is, how the hell am I going to show you guys the firefight? Another montage? Last time I said I need to cut down on the montages, but here I am, killing more zombies. Ah, fuck it. Let's get this bread.
All right, whole new world. It's now day 67, and we're at 8,500 kills. We've not killed every zombie in this mall, far from it, but we're able to descend into the Muldra Plaza. Our entry point puts us into the loading bay, and this place is nuts. There's so much loot here. Three sledgehammers, about eight trolleys, I stopped counting, dozens of weapons, and solar parts out my ass. Still no metal cutters. But there are more small metal sheets here than I will ever need. While we were down there, we tried to reinforce baseball bat as a weapon, and this thing is seriously overpowered. It was still one-shotting enemies despite high exertion and tiredness. I used it until it broke. I cannot let that kind of power corrupt me. When the sun rose on the 68th, it was apparent that solar power was a very real possibility. I'd need to grind up to level 4 electrical to make a battery bank to even be able to see if it were possible. Can you imagine if we were able to power the whole mall with solar power? What was solar power like in 1993? I spend the whole day killing and disassembling. Then instead of sleeping, I snort some more coffee and continue my work. At the end of day 69, Horde Knight reared its ugly head again. I retreated to my little rooftop, but no zombies followed. It must be too difficult for them to path up. Good to know that we're safe. I spend the night building a roof. Ooh. On the morning of the 70th, I decide to check out the damage that the Horde Knight did. It's rough. I quickly get overwhelmed. Holy... I completely underestimated this mall. And on top of that, each time we have a Horde Knight, the number of zombies increases by 50. We've had around 5 to 10, so now we're looking at up to 500 zombies being spawned every single Horde Knight. Shit. 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 I mean, I have to go outside. I can't. I'm gonna survive this. See a gap, see a gap, see a gap. Okay. It takes me a long time to find a spot to get back into the mall. But eventually, I find my way into the loading bay and slip past the zombies. All my hard work has been undone. All the areas I've cleared now had more zombies than when I started. Then my hubris got the better of me. I thought I could lure the zombies away from the loading bay, reclaim the areas we'd lost. Big mistake. Kiting the zombies in the relatively open upper floor was hard enough, but I retreated into the dead apartment store, thinking it had another exit. It's a dead end! Shit, shit, shit. Hello? I got lucky. Really fucking lucky. I retreated upstairs to get my shit together. Welcome to Zonix Mall, arguably the hardest map mod out there. I'm joking! No, it's not! <laughs> Today, we're gonna end it all. Whoa, 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 not like that. Originally estimated at 10,000 zombies, due to the Horde Knight mod and some other settings, we're looking at more like 20,000 zombies. Yeah, it's been pretty rough, but that's how I like my challenges. As soon as I kill all the zombies, I start getting bored. So we return to our in progress shack at the top of the Muldra Plaza. I tried to kill all the zombies using homemade weapons we'd developed, since we had all the ammo in the world, but barely any compatible guns. It didn't go so well, with us being forced out of the dead apartment store. A defeat like that requires some self-observation. We're a mess. Look at this place. We need to update and rework our objectives. Most notably, find the library, find the gun store, and finish building our base. I also want to look into solar energy, since we've found a ton of parts here. This mall really has been the embodiment of quality over quantity compared to the North Mall. But, before we make a scouting mission to find the library and gun store, we need to secure an entry point. Oh, well, that's where they are. 
There's a rooftop access point in the southeast end of the mall, which should be relatively clear after the noise we made in the west. Keyword being relatively. No guns this time. I only want to clear the immediate area. Excuse me. Lower torso. A couple zombies later, and it's safe. Well, as safe as it can be. Zombies will always wander up unless we kill every single zombie in the mall and its surrounding areas, which is looking increasingly unlikely. The next day, we try a change of clothes and set up for the scouting run. Inside my backpack, I keep an essential satchel, so I ditch the backpack and keep the satchel. Inside, you'll find sterilized rags, a needle, lighter, smokes, and medical supplies. It pays to be overprepared. Ready or not, we head inside. I'm going to get around the edge of the mall, that would be better. I don't need to loot. I started looting the gym changing rooms and found some armor pieces. I shoved them all into a duffel bag and left it to pick up some time later. And as soon as that, the zombies were on us. Fuck. I'm not supposed to be fighting. Drop this here. I'll come back for it. This is a scouting mission. Stay calm. Always have an escape route in mind. And don't get cornered. It's all about keeping a level head. But damn if that's not a lot of zombies. That's, uh... That's no good. A roller skating rink gives us a small reprieve before pressing on. Oh, mama. The West End is much quieter. Maybe a helicopter flew over and drew them away. I keep scouting around the top floor, looking for anything useful. I was beginning to think it was all restaurants when I finally came across it. And the top floor is usually food. Close door, can I sneak in here? Survivor there. Oh, there's a oh, honing saw, honing saw, okay. I hadn't really expected the gun store to be accessible. If it were on the ground floor, there'd be no chance of looting. But like this, it's quite enough for me to take a look. Oh, mama. Oh, mama mia. Do I just bring a trolley down and, like, change my plans? Bring a trolley down, loot the hell out of this gun store, and just kill every zombie in the mall. And I end up gathering all the guns into a pile to think over my options. Once again, there's an abundance of ammo, but not a huge selection of guns. So this is everything. It looks like a lot, but how many guns do we have? Double barrel shotgun, already got a G17. Lee Enfield, M1, Mini 14, we've got two of these R1022s, we've got an SKS, we've got Tech 9, that's all it, that's that's everything. Better than the North Mall at least. I check out the last places on the second floor before heading out. Quite a few of the zombies were reanimating. Oh fuck, oh fuck. I was carrying a water cooler, so getting into a fighting state was a bit tricky. I don't recommend ever fighting like this. Next was a quick trip back to the North Mall. I grab all the guns, ammo and attachments. Half of them I won't use but I need to know our arsenal. Plus, I can dismantle some of them for parts. We sleep over on this side. It's nice to sleep somewhere secure for once. Early the next day, we head back down. I want to assemble an armor set, something to give myself a little more insurance. I'd hate to have a bullshit bite end the run. I kinda like that. I run downstairs and grab the duffel bag we left and start trying stuff on. Cool. Now let's see what we got. Aha! Ah. Ah 
There we go. It's a little bit mismatchy, but at least it's all in grayscale. The protection leaves a little bit to desire. We'll have to come back to that. Next, I need to arm myself. For some reason I have a bit of an AK obsession on this run. I've been dying to use it. Sadly, it doesn't take any of the attachments we have. But we have free magazines. Quite respectable. We also have a Tech 9 in our leg holster, with free 20 round mags, and an R1187 auto shotgun. We make a quick run downstairs to check for more mags, attachments, and ammo. And suddenly, the day is gone. I spend the late evening reloading as the sun sets. Now it's finally time to make this mall submit. Fully loaded, with a duffel bag full of ammo and supplies, we head out. Hasta la vista. Cool 2,000 kills later, and the mall is essentially ours. I scout the ground floor, taking extra care in case of stragglers. Most notably, we find a supermarket. I make a point to take all the energy drinks. They restore both your endurance and stamina. Insanely useful. Make small metal sheet. Look at that. That's the one we needed. We can make small metal sheets now. And after a few more shops, we find the library. You know, in hindsight, we didn't really find any of the missing books here. I think the biochemistry magazine doesn't spawn for some reason. Or maybe all the hillbillies looted anything that had the word moonshine in it as soon as the apocalypse started. Either way, I head home and read all the magazines I've been saving, including the one that lets us make small metal sheets. Next on the docket, we need to level up electrical for a solar battery bank. We also need wood, so we head down with the trolley. Let's go. I need wood. Fake solar panels. The little cabin's coming along nicely. Look at that. Ain't that nice. That was a good few days work. The wood and building kind of took priority here. But what's the point in having power if you don't have a base that needs it? I grab a few pieces of furniture and grind up to electrical four. So, solar solutions are not something I'm super skilled with. I make the battery bank, and after a bit of tinkering and googling, I get it working. Well, I, I say working, 
but we still need metal bars for the panels. Luckily, there's a ton back at the North Mall, because, you know, they were our primary weapon for like 50 days. Still our most used weapon, actually. It's night by the time we set up the solar panels and connect them to the battery. We won't know if it's working until the sun rises. Well, conveniently, it takes all night to set them up. And when we go inside... It's probably powering the whole mall. <laughs> I'm gonna need more. So I go out to get more supplies for my remaining panels. I don't think I've missed any, so this is all the solar panels we'll ever have. During the disassembling montage, we had a few hard nights, so zombies are trickling back into the mall. Nothing I can't handle, but as the days go on, it's going to become more and more of a problem. When I get back, I install the new panels, a TV, a microwave, and a sink. And we have power! <gasps> wow. Finally, I can listen to white noise as I sleep. Sadly, it's a pitiful amount, and the batteries will only last about an hour after sunset. This is because our system is managing to power a good chunk of the mall below us. We need a fridge anyway, so we head down to kill the power. Lord. I shove the industrial fridges into kitchen cabinets. Don't question it. It took me a hot sec to realise that the rest of the fridges were in the department store that we nearly died in last time. Whoa! Oh no. Oh no. I can fit the oven in my backpack. Hell yes. Oh, am I in the totally wrong place? Oh, I, st I am. Oh my god. I dismantled a bed in frustration and then ran to grab the trolley and the sledgehammer. So, now our system wasn't powering anything outside the base. I installed a fridge and an oven. I grabbed a washer dryer for uh, reasons. <coughs> I just think the animation is funny. The system could power all of these pretty well, even at night. Last for six hours. Even the zombies were impressed. One even found a way up. I decided that it was about time to finish the base. Like, we literally have a bed, but nowhere to put it. I've been sleeping in a bedroll for 83 days. It may be ruthless, but we sleep in a bed for the first time. <gasps> it's coming together. I decided on a new outfit, and our hair had grown, so a new style was needed. The base was done, but I had all this material lying around. The series has really been crafting focused, so I want a workshop for all my stuff. I grab all the guns and ammo from the gun store. And start working on my extension. Next, I move the solar panels to the roof and the battery bank into the workshop. We had a few more errands to run. Grab the remaining ammo. Head back to the old base again to get the armory table. And this place is really coming together.
Again, we need more wood for building. So downstairs it is. Oof. Maybe not down there. It's getting harder to get wood, but the errands continue. We move the farm over, and, well, there's no chance of us using biochemistry to make gas and use that car to escape, so we need to reevaluate our goal. We've made the bridge, we've made a base, and we've made armor. Go ahead and take those off. We've found as much literature as we're ever going to. Biochemistry is a no-go, but we managed to get electricity regardless. We've organized our loot, leveled electrical, found the library and gun store. Going forward, we need to sort the unusable ammo, make the highest tier salvaged weapons, and I guess the only major goals left are to escape, which we can't do without the car, and to kill every zombie. So I guess we'll work towards killing every zombie. I was working on tailoring when I noticed I was missing a few books. So that was our next errand. However, in the weeks that had passed while building and grinding, Half a dozen Horde Knights had spawned up to 3,000 more zombies. Some of them I'd killed on my errands. Most, however, had grown into overwhelming hordes. Going down to the library, you could tell I wasn't ready for a fight by the lack of weapons and the fact I wasn't even wearing my gas mask. It didn't take me long to realize that we had a fight on our hands. It wasn't going well at all. First, we got pushed back. Then we took a wound to the foot. And our jacket saved us from worse. I tried to catch my breath for round two, when... I had about two minutes before thousands of zombies would be on me, and I couldn't run. Enough time to dip into the library, now empty after I lured the zombies away. We got the books, just in time. The edge of the horde was closing in. Wait, wait, what am I doing? Why am I trying to fight them? There's way too many. Not in this condition. What the hell was I thinking? Thankfully, I came to my senses and went home. It was a close shave, to say the least. The next day was a quiet day of reading and grinding tailoring, until we ran out of leather. Well, there's an excuse to kill zombies. Plus, I was pretty pissed that I had to run away. I'm getting my guns.
Seems like a lot of zombies died in a crush on the stairwell. Shame. I wanted to kill them myself. I do get to sift through the loot, though. The dopamine from finding shotgun shells in the corpse pile never gets old. Still, more were coming. And I was completely exhausted. Home time. Oh, and here's the loot pile from the bodies. Nice. The next day, I went back, expecting a fight. But we ended up getting the lever for tailoring without much issue. Well, apart from lag causing us to crash and respawning us naked as a woman? Huh? Damn, bro. This is why I make backups. And because of the lag, I'd made a precautionary backup like 10 minutes ago, so we didn't lose much. Oddly though, this time, a zombie with a fucking M16 wandered up. It's a shame we don't have any mags for it. When it's in melee mode, I think it acts like a spear, but it damages the gun, so it's really not worth it. We dismantled the guns we found on the bodies for gun parts to make a salvage rifle, basically a homemade AK. I was super excited for this, but first I grinded tailoring in the hopes of being able to fix my increasingly damaged outfits. We still need two more levels though. Instead, we added patches to everything, which adds a good 6% bite and 12% scratch protection, which stacks, so our armor is a good deal better off for it. We were interrupted by a helicopter crash. Quite close, actually. Close enough to see the broken off tail. This isn't good. It'll attract a ton of zombies to the nearby area, which we'll have to deal with very soon. We went back to the gun store to grab some magazines for the weapons we found on the bodies, notably for the FAL. When I took a look to see how the crash affected the zombies inside the mall, I noticed we'd been sitting over a video store this whole time. Naturally, I rushed down, grabbed all the VHSs that increased skill. For the first time, the department store was completely clear because of the crash, so I took a quick look through for anything useful. We can dismantle some of the toys for plastic to use in shotgun shells. We also took the opportunity to do another circuit of the mall. Oh, that's nice. I want my kitchen to look like that. Taking all the supplies and coffee we could find. When we start the finale, we won't be sleeping. Eventually though, zombies were making their way back in, so it was time to dip. When we got home, I sorted our supplies, grabbed some books, checked the batteries, and sat down to watch TV and read. When all was said and done, the battery was still holding a good amount of charge. That got me thinking, maybe we could use some power in our finale, but I've got more important things to do first. We had all the guns and ammo we will ever have in this room. I needed to figure out my finale loadout. This meant the salvage assault rifle I mentioned earlier, and some more armor. First I had to go down to the loading bay to grab a few extra materials. Naturally I took a hit, and didn't realize I'd lost my welding mask until later. Honestly, what's the point in head protection if they just knock it off and hit you anyway? I feel like you really wasted a shotgun shell on that. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is very relevant. We built a forge for the armor, realized I can't craft because I dropped the welding mask, went back and found the welding mask. Where is it? And almost got bit on the way back. Moved the armory table and made a salvage assault rifle. There it is. Now comes the bad news. I was going through all the ammo and seeing what I needed to make, since we have a limited amount of gunpowder from the ammo for guns we don't have. Obviously I wanted to use the salvaged gun, which uses 30 units of gunpowder to make 10 rounds. I don't really have a benchmark for how much gunpowder it should use, so I made a few and started looking at the other rounds we need. I didn't realise it, but I think subconsciously I knew something wasn't adding up. I think we can safely assume that the bullets used for the salvaged gun are 7.62, since it's basically an AK. So we make some 7.62 rounds, and... wait, what? No, how am I this stupid? No, no, don't. You're about to waste all of your gunpowder. No! That's using way more than it's... Oh, no. I just turned like a thousand bullets into 60. Oh, fucking... No, I can't watch this. Makes less than 20 salvage bullets. What about these? 1,800. Oh, my God. Okay, that gave us like five. 1,800 LR rounds equates to 20 salvaged bullets. So we can make any of these, or five of them for two units with this one. Let's see how much was salvaged bullets again. Hold on. 30. Oh. 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 Okay, these are broken. 
That was a bloody waste. Oh, God. Uh, at least we have a ton of rounds already. And we didn't waste all the gunpowder. Just a lot. So we go ahead and convert everything into 762, 45 ACP, and shotgun shells. And for the last time, I update my goals to-do list. Fuck all this stuff. It's rubbish. The last thing to do is prepare for the finale. Oh my god, look how much crap we've got. <laughs> we've really made a mess of this place. We can't even carry all this. I took a revolver, a 1911. 45, huh? The Fowl, the M14, the AK-47, a Spaz-12, a Lee-Enfield, a Lever-Action Winchester, and an M1 Carbine. And a shed load of ammo. All loaded onto shopping carts. I was heavy. That's kind of a look with the... Look, okay, I kind of rate that. Okay, we're, we're doing it. We've been a heavy boy. Ugh, fuck's sake. What a way to start. I ferried all the carts downstairs to where I thought I'd be fighting. I realized I'd made a mistake putting the first one on the ground floor, so I grabbed it and brought it back up amidst increasing swarms of zombies. I had an issue. I could fight in the dark, but you guys can't see shit. I didn't want that. I devised a plan to bring the battery bank down to power the lights. Seems simple enough, but a hard night. Plus, the weight of the bank made things a little more difficult. They're totally still being attracted to me. Fucking how long? Oh my god, how many fucking zombies are below me right now? So, on the day before the finale, I slept for the final time. In the morning, I carted down the bank and batteries. Installed them... But here's the thing, I need to right click on the bank to connect the solar panels, but the panels are back upstairs. If I attack or push a zombie, it cancels. So I have to make my way up through the increasing zombies without fighting them, all while being overweight and limping. I can't... I don't know what I dropped. Free. But I make it. And <laughs> oh, that's a lot of zombies. I connect the panels and it's time to get started. Fuck! The fuck is this? The fuck was that? Another fucking neck wound! Goodbye helmet! Fuck you! I never cared! I'm killing every single zombie! After clearing the immediate area, I head back down to the bank, install the batteries, and voila! Let there be light! There's a problem though. There's a fridge somewhere, drawing all the power, meaning that the batteries aren't going to charge enough to last the night. The zombies are now heading up the stairs. I tried to use melee and stay quiet. The last thing I needed was zombies destroying the battery bank. But it's too late. They're here. It's time to do or die.
Oh! What just happened? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. No, not like this. Oh, the unstitched wound was killing me, but I didn't know. I thought it was the hypothermia killing me. Got it. So yeah, the game crashed. I tried for about six hours to get a good finale, but the game would always crash. I tried setting them all on fire and setting out a view, but it was no use. I've no idea why the zombies ramped up so insanely at the end. Maybe being on the ground floor allowed all the zombies on the map to path to us in a way that they couldn't when I was inside the mall. I really wanted to burn out all the zombies, just to see how many there were, but I wanted to get the series finished more. Thanks to all of you for watching. You make all of this possible and drive me to improve every day. And again, thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring the video. Make sure to use my link to play for free and get the Eagle of War Decorator, 100,000 Silver Lions, multiple premium vehicles, the Gaijin Snail Decal, and seven days of that sweet, juicy premium account time. And of course, huge thanks to all the patrons and channel members. Trush Girl, Dora Elvink, Katsune Teku, Outzao, Kimchi, Veilet, Bitco, Separate Noimod, Harkness, Chaos, Dominic and Gracia, Squatlock, Scotty C, I think that I'm pretty sure those are the same person. Haphazard, Will Cthulhu, Delicate Soul, GamerGuy69, Mason Brewer, Jamie Williams, Foxfired, Aurora, Low Daniel123, Jebol, Heresy, Chrome Chan but JJF, and Uncle Funkel. Oh yeah, and between editing the movie version, I streamed on Christmas Eve and our member count practically doubled. So welcome to all our new members. Invent Mystic, Morph Z, Nurse CH, Spicy Stuff, Bender 24K, David Canberra, Luke the Luck, Cold Kingpin 12, and Red Cloud Love. Alright, 2024, here we come.